Hi there again, everybody. Boyd back with you, and we're here with another update on our Enterprise refit build. This is the 1350 scale kit from Polar Lights. And uh, we left off in the last video here we're working on the uh, upper part of the saucer. We've got our, our side walls put on now. We did some putty filling there. And as I mentioned in the, in the first video, we're going to be doing more mods on this uh, upper saucer here to, to work with some aftermarket parts that we have and to kind of correct some of the inaccurate detail. What I'm talking about is we've got this really cool little aftermarket bridge from HDA Model Works. This is a really nice little part here. It's uh, basically cast off of a 3D printed part, so it's really crisp and uh, detailed. It looks really good. And you can see that what they've done here on this is they've made this with the, uh, you know, if we take our regular bridge, it has really short legs on it here, the part where it sits down flat. The reason that these have been made a little bit longer is what we're gonna do is we're gonna shave off these little raised details here that the original kit part used to sit on. And that way we can slide our bridge just slightly forward a little bit so we can get our spotlight effect to work properly once we put an LED in it. As I mentioned in the last video, if we don't do that, our bridge is gonna sit too far back and this little ledge will be in the way and create a big shadow right here. So what we're gonna be doing is taking our little Dremel tool. I've got my uh, sanding drum on there and we're gonna shave these down. So these are pretty easy to get rid of. It doesn't take a lot of work. Uh, we're gonna be coming back in here and getting rid of these phaser banks and we have some uh, grid lines next to these that we wanna be careful not to uh, you know, sand those off or remove them. So we're gonna be using some tape for that to help protect the rest of the area. But right here, we're gonna just take it and our Dremel tool and just start grinding this down, you know, kind of freehand. And we'll get those all shaved down then we'll finish up with a little bit of sandpaper. So I'll show you how I work these down. I'm just running this Dremel tool on about number four speed and just gonna shave these down real careful. Okay, that's pretty good. It's it's just about perfectly flat already, but we've got a little bit of rough detail. Let me get rid of this uh, shavings and stuff. We've got a little bit of um, a roughness on the top there, so we're going to go ahead and use some 180 grit sandpaper, and we're just going to sand this down and get this all smoothed out real quick. Staying away from the rest of that little detail that I mentioned here in the front. We don't want to lose that. Okay, now we'll go to a little bit finer paper. This is a 600, and that'll clean up the rest of these scratches so that when we prime this, it should look pretty good. Okay, you guys, well, I finished up sanding there with the uh, 600, and we've got this all cleaned up and looking nice and smooth. So what we want to do now is just kind of bring in our um, aftermarket bridge here, just kind of lay it in here and make sure that it's all going to sit nice and flat and everything, and it's going to line up the way we want it to. You're going to have to um, do a little bit of playing around to actually get this set up exactly where you want it when you want to start working with your floodlight effect here at the front. You're going to put your LED in here, and then we're going to kind of, you know, aim it and move it around a little bit until we get everything nice and centered and make sure we're getting a nice, even lighting but that'll come a little bit further down the road i just wanted to make sure i showed you guys how we do this initial preparation work to you know be ready to use an aftermarket bridge part like this so this is going to work out really good once we wind up uh gluing this in place when we determine our final position for it we'll just go around this these edges here with a little bit of our uh 
perfect plastic putty. I'll show you that a little bit further down the road here. We're going to be mixing this up in a kind of a thin slurry type of a you know, mix, and then we're going to use a little applicator tool, and we're going to squeeze a little bit of a bead all the way around this so we get a nice seal, and we don't have any light leaks, and we won't have to do hardly any sanding, if at all, once we finish up doing that work. As I mentioned, this bridge has got a nice little setup here. It's meant to fit, uh, fit this special little LED that we'll be showing you a little bit further down the road here that I'm using. Um, it's a basic flat, uh, wide LED that'll fit right in that little slot right in the front and give you a nice, bright floodlight effect here at the front. But what we're going to be doing next now, you guys, is we're going to be going and um, modifying this phaser bank detail like I talked about. So we've got our um, grid lines here that are kind of close to being, you know, where some of this detail is. And we don't want to be grinding into that and making a bunch of marks on the top of our saucer that we'll just have to go back and clean up. So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of this regular um, painter's masking tape here and I'll uh, kind of just tape off around these so I can kind of protect the... Uh, the plastic part of the saucer there and we can do a little bit of grinding on this and not damage that surrounding area or at least keep the damage to a minimum that we can just do a little bit of easy uh, cleanup work on that afterwards but I happen to think the model looks a lot better <clears throat> if we do this little modification here you don't absolutely have to do it if you don't want to but I just think the uh, model when you especially when you put the um, the floodlight effect on here and you get the shadows if you look at the you know original studio model these uh, square or rectangle shapes around the phaser banks were not raised like that. They were flat. The only thing that stuck up were the, uh, the little round half dome emitters that we see right there. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten these out just so we don't get that shadow. And uh, we'll, we'll just kind of go from there. It really doesn't take that much work to fix that. And um, I'll show you a nifty little trick a little, bit, a little later on in one of the other updates that we use to uh, bring that little round half dome detail of the phaser emitters back when we uh, get a little bit further with our saucer work here. So we'll just get these all covered up real nice and we'll start removing those. Last little piece of tape here. All right, and so again with the old Dremel tool, I'll kind of fast forward through a little bit of this for you guys so we don't drive you crazy with this sound, but we're just gonna get right down on here and shave these down just like we did this little detail up on the top. taking them down very gradually you can see just when I start to uh, knock off a little bit of my tape around the edges that's when I stop that's when I know I've got it down where it's um, low enough and uh, we can sand off the rest of it and smooth it all out so let me get this next one here three more to do a little bit later on on the bottom of the saucer too but this is the basic technique that you use to do those they're, they're basically exactly the same okay I'm happy with that got them down pretty well where they're flush and so I'm going to go ahead and pull my um, my tape off of here now. And we're going to sand out the rest of that and get that nice and smooth. We may have to use a tiny little bit of filler back on that later if we get a you know a little bit of a low spot there, but that's easy to easy to fix. Get these ready to go for some sandpaper here. Okay. See a little bit of a corner on this one that I missed, but I'll I'll risk it and I'll do a little bit of cleanup on that with uh, 
without the tape in place, I should be able to get it. It's just a little spot right there. Just saving myself a little bit of sandpaper time here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll do our 180 grit paper again here. Now I'm just setting this real gentle. I'm not trying to, you know, dig in really hard or anything like that. I'm just getting rid of this little bit of rough plastic. We're gonna lose a little bit of detail where the, um, right in the center where you see this grid line goes through, but I'll show you how we'll fix that in just a second here. Just sanding and looking at what I'm doing here, checking it. It's looking really good, you guys. I've got it uh, pretty much leveled out. So I've got my little scribing tool. Uh, let me get this out of my, my little tray here. Uh, a couple of you guys actually asked about this when I showed this in the last time. Um, I can't remember where I bought this, you guys. It's I think it's a com it's called UMM USA. I think this was a uh, Swedish made even though it says USA, but it's a really nice little scribing tool. It's got this little hook on here and you got this little edge on this side so you can use a straight edge or you can do this little hook technique. This works really good and it's made out of a really good high quality stainless steel so it'll stay sharp. They basically guarantee when you buy one of these that it'll, it'll stay sharp forever. But I like how you can rest your, your finger on this little part right here. So we're gonna just come back in on this little panel line here and we're gonna let the, the tip basically fall into that little slot. We're just gonna gently drag it back and forth like this. The The trick to this is, is not to push too hard. The harder you push, the harder it's gonna uh, try to grab and dig in and, and you know, you're kinda, you're kinda taking too much material all at once. You don't wanna do it that way. You just wanna go back and forth with just even gentle pressure like this. Make sure you let it rest in that little groove that's already there where the grid line, you know, originally was molded in. Just work it back and forth a couple times. Then we'll go around this little, the, the rounded part here, the one of the rings, just to kind of clean up the center part of it. Okay, then we'll just touch this up a little bit with 600 here. All right, and then we're gonna take our little towel here and just wipe this off. And I'll kind of show it to you now. You can see it's all been completely removed and we've got our little grid line back in place here there's just some really fine little micro scratches there that'll all go away once we put a little bit of a you know our first coat of primer now this whole uh saucer i have not um i have not sanded or anything yet now i forgot to mention in the first part of the video there on the first update um that i did go ahead and wash all these parts with uh dawn dishwashing detergent in my kitchen sink with some really hot water and so I've got all the mold release and everything off of it, but you can see the plastic's still really, really shiny. And we wanna make sure that we go ahead and um, get rid of all of that before we go ahead and start uh, putting our primer and everything down, because uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of masking on this. We're gonna be putting a lot of masks on and pulling off when we do our Aztec painting later. Some of the bridge details gonna get painted on, some details around here, 
this little ring. There's details up in here. So all these nooks and crannies, we, we want to make sure that we get those sanded and scuffed. Now I'll use a combination of steel wool, like triple lot steel wool, or sometimes these scotch bright um, sanding pads here work really good too, because you're not really trying to, you know, gouge into the plastic or anything, guys. You're just going to get, you know, some fine scratches on there so that the paint and the primer and everything else has a, um, a nice kind of semi rough surface to you know to, to stick to and that way you won't have issues with peeling paint later on when you're doing a lot of mask work and stuff like that that's really important on a model where you're going to be doing a lot of masking and pulling the mask on and off you don't want to get halfway through your beautiful Aztec paint job here and start pulling off huge chunks of paint that'll most likely go all the way down to the bare plastic and cause you a real headache so it's all about preparation guys and taking your time following the correct steps that you know will work for you and just you know gradually building up to the next step it's really fun to get to the final stage of painting um, but you'll you know like I said don't, you don't want to skip any of the basics here so that um, you won't have those issues later on so I'm gonna go ahead and off camera now and get these other two phaser banks clear, uh, cleaned up I'll be doing the exact same way that I showed you here on the front and then what we're gonna come back with to finalize this uh, first uh, the last of the kind of modifications on the top part of the saucer here we're gonna be putting in our um, our photo etch part here for our officer's lounge window. So I'll show you how we do that right after we come back, guys. Okay, you guys, well, I'm back with you again, and I'm working with some photo etch parts now. Just wanted to show you this really quick. I'll be showing you guys uh, throughout this build um, what I'm working with. This is the uh, Paragraphics 1350 Refit Photo Etch Set. Uh, the, the part number on this is 4204-POL-808, and uh, it gives you basically, you know, a lot of, Nice little detail, you got your uh, impulse engine grills, you've got your um, uh, officer's lounge window here, which we're working with right now. You've got your rec deck windows, you've got your arboretum detail, you've got uh, some airlock details, just a whole bunch of stuff for your model. I've also got the uh, green strawberry set and I've got some more parts that came in from Elliot Brown that we'll be showing you uh, as we go down the road. It's kind of your choice. Now, um, between the green strawberry and the paragraphic sets, there are certain little parts that are included on one and not the other. So you, you might want to mix and match a little bit or just kind of decide if the bo you know both sets include the same part, which ones you like better. And uh, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm working with the uh, photo etch window frame for the uh, officer's lounge, which is located at the back of the BC deck here. And um, what I've done here that you guys missed was uh, I just removed this from the, uh, from the uh, sheet here. And then what I did is I used these really nice, sharp, um, stainless steel scissors and I just trimmed off a little bit of the extra photo etch that uh, was uh, on the sides of this so that now you can see the framework is basically even all the way around and I'll explain the reason I did that you can see what we have here is we have the uh, opening that's you know the way it's set up right out of the box with the kit and when you go ahead and lay your part on here you'll notice that that uh, severely overlaps that hole so what you'd have to do is you'd have to uh, remove a whole lot of plastic to get that to work. And, and because a, a common mistake that a lot of people make with this photo etch detail is that they're trying to put it on over top of this part and then trying to come back and cover up that edge or whatever with a whole bunch of uh, putty or something like that. You re really don't want to do that because it's going to wind up being um, thicker than it should be. And um, you're going to lose a little bit of this nice little uh, curve that they've already got created here and the, the correct shape for the back of the... Uh, of the BC deck detail here so what I do instead is just cut off that extra photo etch and basically make it so where the frame as you can see there is basically equal all the way around now then we don't have to remove nearly as enough you know nearly as much plastic here so then what I did is I laid it on here and uh, I just took my uh, magic marker and I made a little mark uh, on my plastic on these edges here on the sides to show me how much plastic I need to remove so once I've done that I can get this out of the way and I'm just using this little flat file here. This is a little micro file. Uh, it's wide and it's flat and I just start working this from the side like this, just basically hand filing it a little bit at a time. As I get closer and closer to those edges of those lines, what I'll do is I'll stop and I'll keep test fitting this to make sure, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to re remove too much material, but I want to make sure I'm getting enough material out of there. Well, eventually this will just drop right down in there and sit perfectly flush. And then what we do is we'll take a little bit of our uh, masking tape again and we'll mask this from the outside with this part sitting here perfectly flush and we'll apply some CA glue from the backside 
to help hold this in. So what I'm going to be doing, guys, I'm going to be filing away here. I don't want to drive you guys crazy with the sound of the file. Uh, I'll just kind of show you a little bit of what I'm doing here. It's very simple, just, you know, looking at my edge here and just filing back and forth and removing a little bit of material at a time. I might take my Dremel tool and remove some, you know, just, just that way so I don't have to do it all by hand. And then I'll just gradually keep working it in, working it in until I get the uh, part where it'll just drop right in there. So I'll get that part of it done and come back and show you the actual putting the part in there and getting it glued in place. Be right back. Okay, everybody. Well, after a few minutes of using my file to get this opened up, you can see I've got the uh, the photo etch part put in place there, just kind of roughly. Now, what I did is I took some of my um, regular blue painter's tape here, and I put it in from the back side, and just made sure it was all nice and flat, tucked in there. And then I just laid the photo etch part in there until it just barely touched it, and I just kind of manipulated it around a little bit until I got it laying where it was just about perfectly flush. And then I took some uh, some of my thin CA glue and just kind of let it drizzle in. You want to be really careful not to use too much of this, but I just carefully let a couple drops drizzle in around the edges there to hold everything in place. And um, so it's pretty well set in there. Now, uh, it's not perfectly straight. You know, I mean, what I, what I wound up doing here is you want to make sure that the center leg um, of the window port is lined up right with that little center line right there on the saucer uh, grid. So you make sure that that way the window is centered. But from side to side and everything, once you've got that lined up, you just want to make sure you got an equal gap up on the top and the bottom. But uh, the, the little bar's got a little bit of a bend to them or whatever, but it's not to worry. Once we get all this uh, puttied in and filled in, I'll go back with my tweezers and just kind of work those a little bit and get them all nice and straight. Now, what we want to wind up here with you guys is um, we want to wind up with a nice wide opening here with no plastic around the edges of our window, at least fairly far away from it. That way, when we come in from the backside, I'm going to be using some clear acetate plastic some really thin stuff so it'll look like really clear glass and we can glue that in there from the back side and not have a gap in between that and the uh, frame here we want to make sure there's enough room to get that little piece in there and have enough little uh, edges around it to use some canopy glue or whatever we decide to use to glue that in there and have something to glue to as well so I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, the tape off of this now and um, show you that we've got the window basically laid in there. So the next step, you guys, is just to go ahead and take some of our uh, plastic putty. This is why I, another reason why I like to use this stuff. We're just going to be able to put this on here fairly, uh, fairly liberally and uh, let it dry a little bit. And that'll kind of help build up the whole thing here. And, um, and then we'll just take our, you know, our towel with some water on it and start wiping off the excess. And we'll just kind of keep working it with a combination of wiping it off, putting some back on, a little bit of sanding until we get this all worked in. It's just a, it's just a little bit at a time. Take your time doing this, and um, we don't have to be pretty at all here putting on this original coat of putty. We're just going to kind of, you know, blob it over the whole entire thing here. Don't worry about if you get it on the little spokes of the window frames or anything like that. Because like I said, this stuff can wipe right off with water. We just want to make sure we get it all nice and filled in around the... Uh, the edges of the frame and everything so when we go to smooth it out it all has a uh, plenty of material in there where it'll blend in and fill in all those little gaps basically like that now you call, you can go ahead and you know clear a little bit of this out of here if you want to but it's all going to come off really easily with a little bit of water after it's dry and as, as I mentioned before, I like to let this dry up really good, you guys, um, where it's completely dry. That way, when we're using our water on it, we're not taking too much off right away. It takes a little bit of work to get rid of it, if you, if you follow what I'm saying there. So you don't, you don't lose all the putty you've already put back in and, you know, have to put it back in is what I mean. So, okay, you guys, so there's it. There's the window basically roughed in. And uh, so what I'll do now is a little bit of time lapse for you guys. I'll let this dry and I'll come back and start cleaning it up and we'll show you how that works. Be right back. Back with you again, everybody. And I've been letting my putty dry here for a little bit around our officer's lounge window. And it's been drying for about a 50, you know, good 15, 20 minutes here. So I've been uh, just working it down here a little bit with some uh, 320 grit sandpaper, getting rid of the excess putty. I started off with just taking a little uh, Q-tip with some water and just wiping off, you know, far away from the edges where I didn't need to worry about sanding. And I'm just going back in here and cleaning this up a little bit. And um, 
I've got it pretty much pretty well settled in you guys it looks really good I'll show it to you in just a second here I'm just getting rid of a couple little high spots that we have left and I'll take some 600 now some finer paper and just kind of work around the sides of it a little bit to get our deeper scratches removed here Okay, you guys, I'll show this to you. You can see it looks really, really good. We've got a really nice flush uh, mount here where we don't have any sides sticking up or anything. This is gonna come out really nice once this is primered, guys. It'll look like it blends in there perfectly with the, uh, the rest of the uh, BC deck here like it's supposed to. We didn't cover up any of our grid lines or lose any detail or anything, so it looks it's gonna come out looking really, really good. Now, I'm gonna be using um, a regular gray primer on this. I'll be, I'll be going ahead now uh, between the now and the next time you see this and I'll be scuffing this down with some 600 grit paper, some steel wool and uh, get this shine removed from this plastic so it's ready to start taking paint. And then I'm gonna be spraying on some uh, regular gray primer. But what we're gonna use is we're gonna use some Tamiya white primer um, for our final hull color on this before we do our aztec work. So that's all gonna work out really, really good. Just want to show you one more time we did a little modification up here we got our bridge all set up and ready to go now just kind of lay this on here and you can see how that's going to look and uh it's all going to work out really good i'm really happy with everything so far so in the next video you guys we're going to wrap this one up but when we come back um i'll be doing more work on the um saucer here we're going to uh, install our impulse deck here i've got an aftermarket impulse deck that we're going to be using that i'll talk to you about and then we're going to go ahead and um get all of our putty work done on that and then we'll be ready to uh move on to the bottom section and uh things will start moving along pretty good we'll have most of this, the work done on the top of the saucer we've also got to put in our little photo etch parts here for the uh uh the rec deck area here this little group of windows right here that's just a really minor modification and a little bit of filing and those will fit right in we'll show you how we do that in the next video too hope you guys are enjoying this so far i'm having a lot of fun building one of these again uh, bringing back a lot of memories and um, this is going to turn out really really nice you guys we're just going to take our time and uh, go through it one step at a time for you so we try not to miss anything and again if you have any uh, questions or anything just drop them in the comments below i'll either try to answer them for you or i'll uh, show one of your questions in the uh, upcoming video updates see you next time everybody take care and happy modeling